Hello everyone, today I will be reviewing the Duet 2 or the Duet Wi-Fi slash Ethernet controller board and the ecosystem, the software, firmware, everything else related to it. For those of you who don't know, Duet Wi-Fi is a 32-bit controller board designed by Think3D, Print3D and Azure 3D, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. It uses Trinamic TMC2660 drivers as the drivers for all axes and uses RepRap firmware as its firmware. It is open source hardware and software and they offer many accessories to expand the features of the board like the panel do screen or the Due X5 expansion board with 5 more drivers and many more like the PT100 Termster daughter board etc. As I said many more. So anyway to begin the review I will firstly talk about what I like about the board which of course begins with the most obvious ones like the fact that this board is a 32 bit board and uses Trinamic drivers. I'll come back to the drivers in a second, but firstly I'll talk about why I like the 32 bits. And the reasoning is, many other boards that are 8 bits simply cannot compute the signal that you may need. This is especially the case if you are using a Delta 3D printer, but it can be a problem even on Cartesian designs. For example, my Black Widow with my MKS Gen board couldn't generate enough steps for my 40 to 1 gear ratio Flex 3 drive extruder to work on 16 micro steps. So I had to drop it to half steps and it worked okay, but theoretically it reduced my print quality and I would rather have the same micro-stepping on all axes as just a matter of principle. Speaking of micro-stepping, this board supports up to 256 micro-stepping thanks to the Trinamic TMC2660 drivers. Do you need this high of micro-stepping? Probably not, but it is nice to have. And other features of these drivers include that they are extremely quiet drivers, you can print at any setting configured through the firmware, so you don't have to deal with a trim port to adjust the voltage for example, and they print very well without any marks. In fact, the Trinamic drivers, TMC2100 in this case, are the default recommended drivers on the Black Widow community manual for fixing the salmon skin marks on prints. and. What the TMC2660 drivers offer on top of the TMC2100 is the fact that you can configure them through firmware and few other minor things as well which I'm not going to go into. But overall these are incredible drivers and the best that I've seen out of the, any of the controller boards out there. For example the main competitor to this board, the Smoothie board uses A Allegro A5984 drivers which are also nice but you know, it's nowhere near the quality of the TMC2660 drivers and in fact they have realized that as well and theoretically the Smoothie Board V2 is going to use TMC2660 drivers as well but it's supposedly been coming out for quite some time now so at this point I don't know if it's vaporware or if they are actually working on it or not. Don't quote me on anything, I haven't done enough research on that but still it hasn't come out in quite a few years so we will see how that goes. Let's also talk about the firmware. The firmware is very easy to set up through the configurator website. You just need to enter a few basic settings and every feature that I can think of is supported, including all of the Z probes that I know of. The software UI is very easy to use. It has all the necessary features built in and it works very reliably and it is almost good enough to make Octoprint necessary, sorry, unnecessary, but not quite, almost. I'll get back to this. But before I get back to that I want to finish the positives and there's one more thing that I want to mention and that is the, the add-on support or the accessory support is very nice and it adds a ton of features like a screen or a PT100 thermistor or a thermocouple board, more drivers, more heaters, basically nearly everything that you can think of. Only missing thing in my opinion is a camera or a USB camera support so you cannot view your 3D printer remotely without an additional board like a Raspberry Pi as a camera server or anything like that and there is no feature like time lapse recording etc which is a big missing feature in my opinion. Features like the time lapse could easily be implemented via plugins like Octoprint supports as long as the CPU is powerful enough and I get the feeling that CPU is powerful enough and even if it's not you can always develop a daughter board and a coprocessor like a Raspberry Pi. A few nice features can be added through plugins as well which I wish there was a way of using plugins that are available on Octoprint here or at least some get some of those features ported to the vanilla software but you know you can't have everything I guess. 
Main things in my, missing in my opinion are the ability to control relays, to turn on or off LED lights or even your 3D printer. Provided that you have a separate 5 volt supply this should be possible. Or a time lapse support as mentioned before. A file browser, maybe even a built in slicer based on Cura engine just like on o Octoprint. These are a few examples that I can think of off the top of my head and I'm sure there are many more features we would like to see. And this is my biggest criticism, the lack of some features on the software side. But don't let this discourage you from your purchase if you like the board otherwise since you can always use Octoprint for features like these. And I have a ton of tutorials on Octoprint if you're interested in that. And you will not find these features on any other boards either. So this is basically the most feature rich board out there. I just wish there were even more features, that's all. And otherwise I'm, I really like this board and I highly recommend it. And if you're interested in purchasing this board, you can find, you can read more or purchase one through their website, which I link down below. And otherwise I hope you found this review useful. If you did, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.